Per capita, the United Arab Emirates has one of the highest energy consumption levels in the world. In the last 30 years alone, carbon dioxide levels have doubled. I'm Omar Khalifa and I'm in Abu Dhabi to see how a pioneering development in the desert could lead to a more sustainable future. Just a few kilometers away from downtown Abu Dhabi, Mazdar City is a community built around renewable energy. Free of skyscrapers and free of cars, it's a growing city of institutes, businesses, shops, and residents with a desire to live more sustainably. Welcome to Mazda. Thank you. Thank you. Alan Frost is the director, and he's taking us on a tour. Let's do it. Perfect. Let's, Let's go. go. Okay. These are our personal rapid transport vehicles, so uh, PRTs we call them. Yeah. Uh, and they're basically the uh, little bubble car uh, that takes people from uh, where they drop their carbon cars at the edge of the city uh, up to the Mazda Institute. Brilliant. Let's hop in. Shall we? Yeah, let's go. After you. Thank you. I feel like I'm in a sci-fi movie. Welcome to Mazda City. Welcome to closing. Why build a city like this in the middle of the desert? Well, you're right. I mean, we couldn't have picked a more difficult place. Uh, but from a, an Abu Dhabi point of view, uh, it was about using today's oil and gas revenues to create an industry for the future. So, uh, you know, Mazdar is, is more than just a city. It's actually a, uh, a renewable energy uh, initiative. How many people live here? Uh, there's about 130 people currently living here, uh, and there's around about 250 students currently. That's a small number now, but over the next 10 years, Mazdar is hoping to populate the city with a whopping 90,000 people. The first completed part of the city is Mazdar Institute, a graduate research facility. Sustainability here begins with design. This is uh, on the right-hand side here, the, um, uh, the orange is GRC, so it's glass fiber reinforced concrete. You know, what it does is it, uh, it, you know, it screens the, uh, the window openings. Yeah. Uh, so it lets uh, you know, an amount of daylight in, but not too much daylight, so that uh, people are sort of struggling with, uh, with lighting levels inside. Okay. And then on the other side here, it's ETFE. Don't, don't get me to explain what, uh, what, what that is. Uh, but it's a system of uh, compressing air, so it basically uh, uses that as the insulation. Outside, it's, it's pretty hot. Let's be honest, it's yeah, about 30 it's degrees outside, the humidity is about 80%, yes. but here it feels pretty cool. It is, it is, and that's, uh, you know, that's one of the benefits of Mazda. So the very original design uh, was based on a traditional Arabic city, uh, oriented the city on a 45 degree angle to north-south. So basically for most of the day, you can find shade. By doing that and then by reducing the, uh, the width between the streets, uh, and also by the orientation in terms of bringing uh, wind into the city through what we call our, uh, our green fingers. Comparing this to downtown Abu Dhabi, for example, on the same day, we're about 15 degrees Celsius cooler. Yeah, what's this humongous thing here? Uh, this thing is the, uh, is the wind tower. So it's basically a modern interpretation of a traditional uh, Arabic wind tower called Al Barajil. Uh, and the idea is that uh, this, this is oriented in three different directions. So uh, depending on the prevailing wind direction, the louvers at the top are opened up. Uh, the wind comes down, and then they come down this, uh, this funnel uh, to the bottom. And where the air's not cool enough, we actually add uh, a fine mist. So there's like a cooling mist that comes down, and because of the evaporation, actually manages to cool the, uh, the areas. So do you think something like this could be transferable into downtown Abu Dhabi? Absolutely. So I think you know, a, lot of, a lot of new developments, I think, you know, will go back to traditional ways of doing things. You know? But some new developments will be looking at new ways of doing things. The Beam Down project has the potential to convert sunlight into electricity in a much more efficient way than other technologies. It takes the conventional concentrated solar power design and literally turns it on its head. Welcome. Thanks very much. So let me first ask you to wear the helmet okay. in order to avoid any problem with your head if you pass by the heliostat and get uh, fried in okay. the way there. And that uh, is best. Okay. Yes. So what's this crazy looking yeah. contraption here? So this is just an experiment. We're trying to develop uh, a new concentrated solar power plant. This is a small pilot plant that has the possibility of storing energy. And the whole idea is to concentrate the light that comes from a base area into a point at the, on the ground. I'll uh, wear my glasses, otherwise I'm gonna uh, cry. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go and meet your students? Yeah, come. And they can tell us how it all works. The heat generated by this small pilot plant has the potential to reach over 700 degrees Celsius, which is the same temperature as inside a volcano. 
This amount of energy can power up to 15 homes for an entire year with clean electricity. All these mirrors that you can see, they are called the heliostats. So the function of these heliostats is that the sunlight falls on them. They are not completely flat. And all these heliostats have a sensor that points them towards the central tower. The rays get concentrated on the receiver, so you have higher intensity at the receiver. By capturing heat at the base of the tower as opposed to the top, energy loss in the beamdown project is almost completely eliminated. It's precisely this kind of research and development that makes Mazdar what it is. It seems that Mazdar is more than just a city. Absolutely. So it's, it's an initiative uh, across uh, the whole renewable energy landscape. Uh, but in addition to that, it's, it's trying to bring a new industry into Abu Dhabi and into the region. So it's really about you know, renewable energy and clean technology. It sounds a bit corny, but we like to think of ourselves as the Silicon Valley of renewable energy.